then I came out with this new book. And this new book is called Have a Little Faith. And this book is actually the first nonfiction book that I've written since Tuesdays with Maury. It's a true story, and it actually began 10 years ago. It took me that long to write it. It began 10 years ago with a, an old clergyman, a religious man who I had known my whole life since I was a little boy. And he came to me when he was 82 years old, and he said, I want to ask you a favor. And he had never asked me a favor before. I said, well, sure, what, anything. And he said, I want you to do the eulogy when I die. And I was very stunned to be asked this because I'd never done a eulogy for anybody. And anyhow, who was I to do a eulogy for the guy who does eulogies, you know? That was, that was his job. And so I said, well, I can't do a eulogy unless I get to know you as a man. Because all my life I've only known you in services or in the congregation, but I don't know you as a human being. I've never been to your house. I've never had a meal with you, anything. He said, all right, come get to know me as a man. And I thought that that would be maybe two months or three months, because usually when somebody asks for eulogy, we're pretty close to the end. Eight years later, I was still visiting him. Uh, he lived another eight years till he was 90 years old. And so I got to see this man of faith away from the services, you know, away from the temple, away from... I got to see him on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and it was very interesting to see how a quiet life of faith can be led, and the good that you can do for other people, helping people who are poor, helping people in your community, believing in something bigger than yourself, comforting people when somebody dies or is sick. And at the same time that I was doing that, where I live in Detroit, which is a very, very poor city in America, we have 24% unemployment now, there was a church that was uh, had a big giant hole in its roof. I mean, like from there all the way over to there. And during the winter, the snow and the rain would literally fall in on top of the congregation. And so they couldn't even pray without getting wet or snowed on. They had to even build a tent inside their own church just to pray. And the pastor of this church was a man who had been a thief once and a criminal and a drug dealer, and he had turned his life around, and now he was ministering to the poor. And I got to know him as well. And so here was one guy in Detroit, African-American, in a poor community of one faith, and then here was another guy a thousand miles away who was older, white, a different faith, a different community. And I was going back and forth between these two men, and even though they couldn't have looked more different or been of more different faiths or have more different backgrounds, I found that they were really the same because they both had this very strong belief in, in something bigger than themselves and in helping other people. And so I sort of wove these two stories together as I tried to come up with a eulogy for this man and to try to help fix the hole in the roof for this church. And so this story kind of tells the story of those two men as I go in between them and ends, of course, when the old man dies and I have to give the eulogy, which now contains many things that I've learned about faith and people getting along. And the reason that I say it's an important book is because I think we're at a point in our history in this world where faith is either going to unite us or it's going to kill us. We're either going to destroy ourselves over our differences in faith or we're going to learn how to get along. And I'm really very uh, impressed with how Singapore seems to have managed to find a way to get along between all the different faiths that it has here. You've got you know, three very distinct uh, large groups of faiths, different races, and yet you manage to do it in harmony. And I'm very impressed with that. It's more than I can say that happens in America a lot of the time. And maybe we could take a lesson from Singapore, but meanwhile the rest of the world hasn't learned to get along quite as easily as you have. And so I'm hoping that this book, in some ways, is sort of like what you've managed to do here. It encourages people to find the similar things in faith and to admire the fact that, all right, yours might not be the same as mine, but it's good that you believe in something and I can get along with you. It's good that I believe in something you can get along with me. And uh, hopefully this story teaches those kind of lessons along the way. And I'll just end with one thing that was said to me by this old clergyman in the last time that we met. He was very old, he was very weak, and he said, we were talking about heaven, and he said that he hoped that I would get many more days on earth so that when I died, I would see him in heaven and we'd have a lot to talk about. And I said, well, do you really think we're going to see each other again? And he said, well, don't you? And I said, well, let's face it, I don't think I'm going where you're going. <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, come on, I mean, you know, you're... You're...
special, you know, they must have a special place for people like you. You're a man of God. And he looked at me as if I were being very naive, and he said, but you're a man of God too. Everybody is. And for somebody like him at 90 years of age, and a pious, righteous man, to look at somebody like me, who was not that way, and say, but you're the same as me, that really meant a lot to me, because that's what faith, I think, is supposed to be about. It's not supposed to be about, you know, wagging a finger and saying, well, I'm more pious than you are, so I'm better than you. And it's not supposed to be one faith telling the other faith, well, I'm right and you're wrong. It's supposed to be about being able to look at everybody and say, well, you're a child of God, too. Everybody is. And if we really did that, really did that, then we'd have to treat each other better because we'd be more alike, right? And we would see everybody like ourselves, and you don't treat yourself badly, so why would you treat someone who was just like you better? And so that's the message I'm trying to get across with this book. And I do want to say that as a result of this book coming out, uh, and the story about this hole in the roof in the church, which had been there for 10 years, people started to send in money, even from Singapore. We got some donations from people here in Singapore, $5, $10, a little bit here, a little bit there. And just before Christmas last year, a big truck pulled up to this church and started unloading shingles. And we were able to replace the whole roof uh, of this church just before Christmas. And in the place of the big hole, now if you look up at the ceiling, you'll see a giant plaque. And on the plaque is the name in small letters of every single person, including somebody here who might have sent in money from Singapore. Every person who sent in even 50 cents is now up in the plaque to show how you fix a hole in a roof when people can get together. So it really was a worldwide effort. And I, I thank you for uh, those of you who might have participated in it. It's something called the Hole in the Roof Foundation, which I formed. And we're now helping to fix up an orphanage down in Haiti as our next project. So a lot of good has already come out of the result of this book. And I, I'm very appreciative for those of you who already have gotten it. For those of you who haven't gotten it yet or are considering it, I just want to warn you it is not one of those books that tells you you have to be this or you're going to hell, you know, or you have to be this. It's not, it's not a religious book that, that, that warns you. It's a book that celebrates all kinds of faith and celebrates people getting along. And this seems to be a very good country to do that in because you've managed to, uh, you've managed to not only do that here in this country, You've managed to do it in some incredible heat. I don't know how you live here. This is way too hot a country. Okay, I like everything I've seen here except your heat. Your heat is just... And they say this is like a cold month here, right? That I should come back in July and I would just melt? Because when, when we left Detroit, the snow was like this high on the ground. And we had, our, we had these big coats. My wife and I had these big coats on. We went to the airport. And then we just take them off and you leave them in the car because somebody says where you're going is going to be like 90 degrees. And it's even hotter than that here. So not only do I admire you because you all get along with one another, but I really admire the fact you survived this heat. That's just incredible <laughs> to me. So anyhow, I will stay here until everybody gets their book signed. So don't worry about how many people are here. If you want to go have lunch and come back, that's fine. You know, I'll still be here. Uh, and I'll sign however many copies you have. And I'll be happy to sign whatever name you want in them. I, I'm very, very, very grateful to my readers. And I never take them for granted. I never thought that I would be someplace in another country with a book. Believe me, when I wrote Tuesdays with Maury, I was I thought I'd have it in the trunk of my car for the rest of my life, and everywhere I went, I would have to open the trunk and give out copies just to get rid of them. So I, I really appreciate being able to have a crowd of people here in Singapore. And thanks to Penguin Books, and thanks to Borders, uh, which began actually in my hometown in Detroit. The very first Borders is, uh, was was where I where I live now. So I'm happy to have uh, for them for having me here, and I look forward to meeting all of you. And just please spell your name for me, okay? Because I. I've already seen some really weird names here that I don't know how to spell. I may be a writer, but I'm not a speller, so you can help me out. So thank you very, very much. Appreciate your coming out. Nice to meet you.